everybody and welcome to the Sim Experience SA MX5 Cup sponsored by the Safe Boys. This of course is round two coming to you from Laguna Seca Raceway in the United States. This is of course in California in the United States. Our schedule of course this is round two. We will be heading over to Portimao in Portugal for round three. Luca de Chirard for round four, Suzuka West for round five, back to Zandvoort, but that'll be the Grand Prix circuit for round six, the Sepang North circuit for round seven, the Portimao once again that would be the Grand Prix circuit, the first Portimao will be the Portimao Chicane circuit, slightly shorter version, then we head off to the UK to Branzach Indy circuit and finally we head off to Hockenheim for their national circuit. Our points coming into this round, or four rounds, Points allocated for first place is 340, sorry, 350 points, all the way down to 30th, where it will be 10 points, and any position after 30th will also get 10 points. So the standings coming into this round, we have Jason Underwood in first place on 682 points, Melvin Brunt on 680 points, Gerrit Birkus on 675 points, Andy Darnell on 500 points, Jean de Toy on 500 points, Timo Smith on 480 points, Jonathan Benz 470 points, Sean Olafier 450 points, Julian Brains on 450 points, Yandre Dupinar on 440 points. Then we have Matty Rienen on 420 points, Rene Deploy on 380 points, Gabriel Tapu on 380 points, Emily Benz 350 points, Reno Berger on 300, Rian van der Veste is in 290, Andre Hildebrand 280, Ricardo Costa 240, Sean Johnson 230, Rene Toy on 230 also. And the final few, Dinash Singh on 220, Dani Standard 200, Stan Bezadenote on 160, Caroline Yost on 130, Malt van Arder on 120, Johan Birkus 110, Robbie Hose on 50, and Ariane Balder unfortunately had a DNF so he didn't score any points from round one. Of course the car that everyone is driving tonight, it is the Mazda MX-5, the 2019 version, the ND2 which is a slightly heavier but slightly more powerful version. It is 184 horsepower, 1140 kilograms. So it has about a power to weight ratio of 5.67 kilograms per horsepower. It is a rear wheel drive. It, this particular version uses the BF Goodrich tires, whereas other versions use the Michelin Pilots. And it is a six speed manual gearbox. Right, I believe everyone is now in qualifying, so I am going to jump to qualifying and we can just um, see what everyone is doing there. Let me get that right. While you're transitioning to quali, uh, you forgot to mention somebody might have spotted in the points, specifically I think for first and third, there is a funny amount there, like fives and twos, where all the points are allocated actually in tens. There are points allocated for first, second and third position in qualifying. So that's a once-off. So Gerrit Birkus was first in qualifying last time round, Jason Underwood second, and Melvin Brown third. So Gerrit got 35 points points, Jason 32 and Melvin 30. So those are bonus points for qualifying, but that is only, there is obviously only one session of qualifying. The race start in race two is determined by a reverse grid for the results of race one from first to tenth. Right, thank you for that clarification and good evening, Sean. <laughs> good evening, Dennis, and uh, nice to be here. Is the circuit just a question from what I could glean off the, the internet? Is it still the Mazda Raceway, well, as Americans call it, the Mazda. They simply extend the A. Previous sponsorship was Mazda themselves, sponsoring the Guinness taking the race track. I believe so it's changed. I believe it's now the WeatherTech one. Okay. We do see all the WeatherTech logos, and as far as I know, that is current. It is the WeatherTech Laguna Seca Raceway. Okay, so then my um, the track map is right, but the the naming convention in the middle is wrong. All right, so we do have some drivers on track. There is just over ten minutes left in qualifying, so we will jump to qualifying now and just catch up with all the drivers. All right, so welcome everybody. This is now live. We are currently watching. Is that Matty? I'm actually a bit of a loss. 
65, Melvin Brunt. Melvin Brunt, okay, Matty is in 55. Yeah, Matty actually, um, 55, uh, Matty Renault, I think he's not racing tonight, but he's, I'm not sure that that number is as per the regs, because it's, uh, what shall I say, a claret or wine red colored car with a black number. Uh, it isn't the traditional like everybody else has a circle with white background and black number inside it his number is black on wine red so it reads actually quite difficult um, from what i could see in the last races last week but yeah andre dipinol comes across the line he should improve up to fifth place yeah. Now that's, he's in fifth, uh, car number eight is the Andre. One thing I did notice is, for me it's important, but for other people it probably doesn't matter. They don't display the car number in the little logo at the bottom. And Timo Smith, for instance, if I can find him just very quickly, which I can't, he's in 69. Yes, Javikos is back tonight. He's actually been looking a little bit stronger this round than the previous round. Um, I think he was at one point running 15th, which is quite a, a solid performance by Harvey. We also do have a few other drivers joining us tonight. So we have some drivers unfortunately not able to make it tonight. But we have Hilke who's joined us tonight. So welcome Hilke. Welcome to the championship. We knew he wasn't going to make the first round, but he was actually looking like he wasn't going to make tonight because he had some hardware issues, but he's in. So I guess everything's all sorted. That's great stuff. I had the drivers um, sorted as well. Um, I don't have Hilke in, in my list, so I'll need to add him. He's, I might have him in the entrance numbers, but I'll have to go looking for him. We picked but, his car only yesterday or today, number 72. Okay, I saw him asking for that number, so he ends up lost anyway, so I'll just update my sheet here. Having a look at Jonathan Benz getting it all wrong, going through the corkscrew, getting very loose on the exit there. Currently our provisional pole sitter. Jonathan. Jonathan sitting on a 139.0 provisional pole position. We did see 38s, mid 38s to low 38s in practice, so the times should be improving. as he comes across the line. I think this lap is not going to improve and it does not. The driver on a good lap I believe is Gerrit Bierkes. Currently fastest overall in the first sector. Let's go on board with Gerrit here. Let's get a bit of a lap. So actually there's, there's a few spots on this circuit where the braking, you actually crest the hill and you've got to be on the brakes and then you've got to change direction and elevation. So it's tricky as to where you brake, how early or how late, whether you give the car time to settle down here. Um, this is one of them, you see brake marks going off the track there. If you this that fraction late, that's the last corner of the track. And then I think it's just a slight sweep to the left. Then there's a hairpin, and that's also very tricky because you, I think it has a slight crest. Here we go over, don't worry about this. Yeah, there's the crest, and then you've got to be on the brakes to actually get into this hairpin here. And the, the car is unbalanced. So you want to think about it, there you can see a little bit of fight with the steering wheel getting the car pointed in the right direction, but there are more places like that, the corkscrew is the one that you mentioned earlier, that's very tricky to get the car right and set up for that corner. I believe the corkscrew drops to the three storeys, from highest point to lowest point I believe is a three storey drop. My, well, or is it two my stories? 101 of, if it's two stories, then it's probably six meters because it's two meters per story. If it's three, then it's nine, and that sounds, but even two story drop, um, six meters, that's um, noticeable. Um, it's a double story house that you're changing elevation and if you think what part of the car gets light what part of the car gets heavy and you change in direction then it's really really tricky speaking of which right we hit the highest point starts to dip down here then there's a big dip here also it goes left and right compresses you all the way down here. it's down here down here down here and then it'll start to level out around about at the right hand here at this point it's now level 
that's Harit trying his damnedest. He's just over 0.05 of a second behind Jonathan at this stage. So, at this stage, Jonathan is going. Malvin's actually well. just, just pinched pole position or provisional pole position. Ah, so Mr. Brandt is the number 65. Harit should steer it though in a moment. And he does, that was a good lap. Yeah, that's about a quarter of a second from Melvin, so certainly worth fighting for with just under five minutes to go in the practice session. And Stan Bazade note also on a good lap. Personal best for him. Let's see how he can improve. Currently sitting in 19th position. I don't think Stan has had much time to practice once again this week. He didn't for the previous race either. So I'm sure he's likely just to improve last week. I think race two, he definitely improved. He had one or two incidents. But I think definitely getting the hang of it as he gets more lap time down. Personal best in sector two as well. This could potentially move him up to 17th, maybe 16th place. Currently in 19th place. So this will be a couple of places he could gain. Right, into the final turn. Actually, a very tricky turn there because it's a lot tighter than you realize. You also see he took it sort of in two chapters. He turned in probably more slower than what he thought and then actually allowed the car to drift out and gain some speed again. And gets up to 16th position. As we see a comment there from Sumer about uh, this being Rossi's, one of his most iconic tracks. Yes, the corkscrew was where he made that famous pass on Casey Stoner. And that started a whole debate between Stoner and Rossi, which was quite entertaining. <laughs> but definitely one of the greatest bike rides from Rossi, where he was out-qualified by a second over Stoner, and yet managed to win the race. Yeah, quite noticeable. And one of the other probably lesser-known facts about this corner, and I'm just trying to think whether it was at turn two. Um, help me right, Dennis. Was it Akiri Yanagawa? He was just... He was on a Kawasaki, I remember, just peacefully taking turn two, and somebody going into turn two at high speed had total brake failure. It was in the World Superbike Championship, and just hit, I think it was a Kiri, in turn two from the left. That was that's the 750 days, I think. Yeah, it, and hit him, and it was actually a really bad accident in looks. I think he was out of racing for a while, but certainly turn two, if somebody is late on the brakes in turn one, and carries on straight and you've turned for turn two and the driver that is in late misses the corner on the inside then the chances of you being collected are very great now, it's a fantastic circuit i think for anyone to drive or ride it um, because of the elevations and it's so extreme certainly on a bike the compression through a corner is something that i've always enjoyed a, a corner that compresses it's constantly going down and turning pushes you down as it will in the car as well it'll push you down to the seat and that's the sensation that gives you that feeling of being on the edge yeah and certainly with the bikes i think you'll feel it a lot more in, than in a car because you've got to transfer your body weight across as well but i think we need to be talking more bikes than cars at the moment so i guess it's an interest of yours as well dennis i do know so here's emily benz one of the lady drivers and let's see where emily is finding herself i see caroline is in 23rd at the moment jonathan who's he's doing well he's a father he's in fourth and not just there's emily intense she was running top 10 in last race as well in the first race as it were and i think we just have a quick look across she finished 14th overall for the day i think she just validated that lap she's she's got a 13th and a 14th place um in the first race or the first set of races let's so, go on board with jason sorry to butt in there this is a flying lap it's the dying minutes of the qualifying this is the last chance for jason currently not qualified by Kurt once again yeah but it's close it's very close although Kurt did open the gap slightly to three and a half tenths yeah, I suppose Garrett also has a lap to complete, so he could respond if Jason does something. Time has actually run out. I keep forgetting that with this series, it doesn't allow you to finish your lap. So, okay. in pole position, we have Garrett Birkers from Jason Underwood, Melvin Brandt, Jonathan Benz taking fourth place, Timo Smith in fifth place. It's probably going to start scrolling, so I'm going to jump to an ad break before I get caught out again like before. <laughs> but... We have our top 20 on screen. As soon as it starts to scroll, I am going to move. 
I can take those points already and put them into the points for right. the I'm race going, I'm going to scroll. <laughs> That's you all in a moment. Yeah, it's only...
Right, welcome back everybody. We of course are now live. This of course is for we find the right buttons. <laughs> the Sim Experience SA 2024 Mazda MX-5 Cup. Sponsored by the Safe Boys. You can head over to www.thesafeboys.com if you have any safe requirements. No, no safe too small or too large is too much of a challenge for them. Give them a shout. They can help you out with purchases of new, second-hand, any repairs. You need to get into a safe. Give them a shout. Of course, this is race one. Race one of round two of the Safe Boys MX-5 Cup coming to you from Laguna Seca Raceway in California, United States. I'm your commentator, Dennis Mitchell, joined tonight once again by Sean Woodgate. Good evening, Sean. Good evening, Dennis. Thank you very much. Nice circuit, this nice and interesting. I think the drivers also enjoy the elevation changes, and there are tight corners, hairpins, straights, 90 degree bends, and then, of course, the notorious, or some people like it, some people hate it, the corkscrew, which is a bit of everything, but it's very, very tight, and I've even seen overtakes up and over there, but you really need to be gutsy to overtake there. Drivers heading into turn one, the start is very quick at this track, getting caught out very quickly there. But as we see all the guys in the front getting through nice and clean, looks like, oh, one spin there, I think. Two, three, four. Car in the middle of the road. They're, they're taking each other again, which is really not the thing to do on the warm-up lap, because you might end up with damage which can be detrimental. These guys, are they now still allowed to take up their position on the grid? Well, that was uh, the start of the race, so that wasn't the formation lap. They don't have a oh, formation okay. lap per se. And that I was Melbourne, one of our championship rivals, has unfortunately had an incident and been spun around. So he's going to have quite an interesting ride for race one, working his way back through the pack. Melvin was third in qualifying, so yes. certainly he's got a hard job ahead of him for this race. And as a result, Jason has got to the front, Kurt is demoted down to second place. Jonathan in third, Timo in fourth. Um, I always get Emily Benz in seventh. Look at Emily having a go here with DeAndre Dippenau. Yeah, uh, she certainly has a good turn of pace. She showed it last week, didn't get the result. Uh, she was running in tenth, as I said, but then somehow got uh, muscled out and finishing, I think, 13th and a 14th position. Oh, but herself th and DeAndre running off track there. She has a good turn of speed, she gets seventh, but only by 0.4 of a second that she's behind Young Ray. Unfortunately, she spins into the wall. And that's quite severe. And that promotes Andre Hildegard, all the cars behind scrambling to get past her. They don't have much time to see that because they get out of the corner, which is a 90 degree left, which is turn 11, and then all of a sudden you've got this car right in front of you, so you've got to get your car settled out of the corner, then all of a sudden you've got to rethink everything because you've got to miss the car ahead of you. I think they did pretty well out of that. So, well, what I was going to say is um, I need to, need to get my game face on again to get that there's no warm-up lap in this championship, they go straight to race. So, yeah, Jason Lee's got it from Jonathan Timo. I uh, always get them confused. The two and the Pinar, Yandre, Jandre, between the two of them. Look at the start Harvey's at. He's up to 11th place. Yeah, and he was, I think, 18th or 19th thereabouts. So, I think with all the me melee and the fun of the field behind him, he certainly had a good race and hopefully he does well. Nice battle here between Rudy van der Vestes and Stan Bezadner. Stan having to just get by on the outside there. Nice and clean. Careful of that uh, sausage curb on the inside there, because if you hit that, that throws you wide in, in, into the dirt. You can either lose a lot of time or go in the barrier. And Mornay de Toy, I think it is. No, jean de Toy already has a DNF. Oh dear. So that means, do we only have 23 cars on the grid if he's shown as a DNF? Then, oh, yeah, you can see the elevation change. I think if you look ahead of you, there's parts of the circuit that are much higher in altitude as you look up. But certainly that makes this circuit very interesting, is the fact that you have uphills and valleys. And the, the drivers certainly do have a great time. Oh, there's a bit of the car going in every direction except where the road goes. But he gets it into the right position again. It is on a side by side of Stamba's aid note, yeah. yeah. Is it getting up the inside of Stamba's aid note? was turn one. This is now turn two according to the Americans. They seem to think that kink is a turn. 
Yeah, they, they number it, but I don't think the drivers worry about it too much. But then it's a very long hairpin, so I would rather say it's a, a high, not quite a high-speed sweep, but uh, I don't know what you do that third gear through that sweep. But certainly, there's the, you can see the pit lane feeds back on. Who is it that went off there? Is that Emily? I think it was, yes. Yeah, so yes, she is, yeah. down to 15th, yeah. So I think she went in for repairs after that hitting of the wall. But yes, she's still on track, so you've got to be in it to win it and stay ahead of all the others. Jason has a lead of 0.4 of a second on Harrod, which is really not very much. I'm going to be, is it going to be up to that for this evening? And Harrod Birkus, of course, runs number 31. See if he's going to be able to catch up and pass Jason Underwood. And Jason runs number 69. Arian Boulder having a, a better start for the looks of things than he did last week. He's at least in the running. I think the track he also knows a bit better. I know he was extremely frustrated after the results from last week. You know, guys were, I think, very excited. He had good pace in the practice up to last race and then having incidents in the start, I think, was. Very difficult pull to, to swallow, but he's in the race. He's unfortunately not showing the pace he had last week. That's Arian, of course, is car number two. If you now and then we get the camera actually to zoom in and you can see the car numbers, and he is running 19th, which, as I said before, you've got to be at least in the race and finishing to score points. Who's he coming up to now? That I think is Malt, Malt van Aarde. Yeah, but he's asking what happened to Jean Ray, and unluckily we don't have the time to go back to the footage and have a look. But certainly, I think he might have been one of the cars involved. There's a bit of leaning on Ariane there, so I think Malt will stay out of that. Yeah, unfortunately, with this, we don't have a rewind feature, so we can't do the replays like we could with other servers and things that we run. All right, so Melt fighting off a charging Ariane Boulder at the moment. Yeah, and it's the tricky part, Ooh, using the curbing there and a bit on the left-hand side. But the old thing slow in is fast out. That seems to be, and using just enough of the curbing not to unsettle the car, but get a good line out there. He didn't actually, uh, it missed the apex by about a foot or so. Now there's a car in the way of the racing line, which gives Arian a chance to slipstream and pass. We'll see now with the road, it's, there's a slight kink to the right and then to the left. And it's the corkscrew, which is the elevation change. And it looks as though Ariane has made, although he's sticking to the right, yes, he's made the pass stick. So well driven there and well positioned. And nice to see that everybody gave everybody else enough room to get through. And it looks like we have a change at the front. Well, they neck and neck. It certainly is very, very close. Oh, they're leaning on each other. That's good racing. Yeah. So just give each other enough. It actually it slows both cars down there. They're rubbing again. There's a cause width there, so... And it looks like that has gone through. I'm not so sure whether Jason's going to enjoy that too much. Number 69. Sorry. There's two 69s. Jason and MRI Timo Smith. That's correct. Yes, they're yeah. Yeah. But that'll definitely be Jason. So he's behind Fabric now, the flying bum will be Mazda in the black, or well, yellow and black. And then Jason off, Jason is actually all flying for the corkscrew. But he's right there, you see the cars, as Dennis was mentioning earlier in the commentary, that the compression, well, with bikes it's more noticeable, but even in the cars you can see the suspension compressing as they come out of the corkscrew and really get pushed down into the tarmac. And then you still got to change direction as well. Corkscrew is turn 8 and 8A, they mention it, and that's followed fairly closely by 90 degree left turn 9, 90 degree plus minus to the right turn 10, and then a 90 left again is turn 11, which puts you into the main spread. He's putting his car there, they know each other. Is he ahead? I think he is ever so slightly, but Kurt's got the inside now. 
Yeah, he's, and also does a blocking pass, just drives past him and then immediately puts the car in front of him. So that means Jason can't get back at him on the next corner, he'll have to fight it out. Think it out, sit behind him, see where he might be a little bit quicker, where he can catch up. We did get commentary from the drivers in the podium presentation last week that these cars certainly can slipstream or drafting as Americans. That's running a little bit wide into the corner there and a little bit oh yeah. Not well, sure well held uh, wow. Yes. So certainly Jonathan now down to six was that um Yandre that got past him. Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah. So robust, but uh, looks like all is fair in love and war, as they say. But Everybody's still on the track, that matters. If we look, number 21 is Jonathan Benz, and he was much higher up, but he's in sixth position now. Let's see, where Emily also has lost a few positions down in 13th, and Caroline, the other of the lady racers, is up to 21st, because I think she was 22nd. But who was it that was off into the grass there? Seems to be dry season. That was Harvey, I think. Yeah. We're we going up the inside of Harvey. I think oh, this God, is what no. is this Matty right behind Rian here? Um, oh, Stephen is Rian from the base station. So behind him will be Arian Belder. I think this car is directly behind is Matty, but he's a lap down. That's why I'm looking at the okay. timings and it's, it's incorrect. Yeah, so that's a bit confusing. The fact that he is a lap down, but yeah. I think he put it for repairs after the race one, and perhaps his wheel was knocked skew or something, and he probably had to put. That's a bit yeah. of a shame because he's definitely one of the top guys and he's running, I think, second in the championship at the moment. 55 is Gabriel Tapu. Let's see if he is on the list because I thought he wasn't going to race this race. Yes, he's not here tonight as far as I know. Oh, then it must be Matty Renault, so they're teammates as well. Both, they both run 55, although technically it's quite strange. They're two different cars and the one says 55 on the side. But it's actually on the listing in the game, it shows as number one, which is quite odd. Hey, that's strange. I have one as Andy Donnell. Yes. So that's, there's two number ones, effectively. One's got number one on the side, and it's number one. One's got number one, but number 55 on the side. I'm not sure what the reasoning for that is. Is somebody going very slow and staying all the way out of the way? I think that's Caroline. Yeah, that's Caroline just getting out of the way of everyone. Yeah. Hugs the inside line, which is the right thing to do. Um, stay off the racing line, sort of middle of the road. There's nobody really behind him. Nice battle that's going to come up to her pretty soon. I think that might be as close to her as around turn three, four, five thereabouts that they might catch up to her. There's a and then they did. big battle still going on at the front here, though. Yeah, it looks as though Gharit has half a second lead over Jason. So it's just enough to have enough space to run your own racing line, if that makes any sense at all. For Gharit, he doesn't have to defend from Jason. Jason's about just looking at it by eye. What he gets at about five or six car lengths, maybe a little bit more even, depending who's accelerating and who's braking. It looks, it looks a bit like Kurt is starting to open the gap a bit at the moment. Yes. It's not um, and even, even visually so, if you look forward out of Jason's car, then it looks as though Kurt is the car is getting a little bit smaller in the distance as he goes along. Here we have Jason's view of Kurt ahead of him now. So they get to the corkscrew. Oh, look at that car lift the back end and then bottom. You see the sparks fly. So it really compresses on the shocks and the springs. And it really has to, you have to be having your wits about to. Here's Jonathan Benz. And is he with uh, Yandre Dipinov? Yes, that is Yandre so, Dipinov. That's correct, yeah. So the two of them, the colors are very similar, but certainly the numbers are different. And. We know that Jonathan was lying much higher up, but possibly a mistake, but still a solid fifth position, but he's five seconds behind Sean Ulifi. So a solid fourth position for Sean Ulifi at the moment. Slowdown penalty, I missed who it was for. Yandre Dupno, I think. Yeah, so um, that, what was that, exceeding track limits? Yes, obviously trying very hard to catch uh, Jonathan in front of him. 
And just for those that are asking, what does it mean to slow down? I'm not sure what the time is, but you've got to slow down X number of seconds or a second or two. So you've got to get off the throttle for a bit. The sensor will then get sensed that you've slowed down and given up that bit of the road, and you can then race your normal race again, and the penalty is deemed to have been served. So you should see the gap between them increase after he has done the slowdown. Looks like he's actually losing a bit of ground now to Jonathan. But Jonathan sort of stabilized his position by the looks of it. Only pulling away in fifth place. I think last week he was fourth place if I'm correct. And race one. Um, I think race two he was eleventh, he had a bad race two. I think race one was four. Jonathan. Yes, Jonathan. Yeah, he got 260, which was a fifth position, and then 210, which is a tenth. So he got a fifth and a tenth. He's lying seventh overall in the championship. All right. Another one having a good race. Melvin's starting to come forward in the race. I think also caught out at the start there with all the incidents that he had to avoid, or maybe he got spun. He was one of those, but he's coming back to the pack. Yeah, that's Nolan Bunt, number 65, he's just made a pass there, and he, whoever he went past, stuck to the racing line, which is the right thing to do, which then leaves all of the rest of the track open, and Melvin got passed quite cleanly. Difficult corner to make the pass, but certainly he chose it correctly, and now he is chasing hard. Who's next in his fights? Andre Hildebrandt. Andre Hildebrandt, uh, even in seventh position. Oh, yeah, good race, yeah. You know, we haven't seen him that high up in the top ten for a long time, so certainly showing potential. Is he being sold a dummy there? The crossover? No. Andre is sticking to his racing line as he's right. That was, that was a do. good defensive move. If you know Laguna Seca, you know that that is a very good move. Because it's double apex turn there, you can take the tighter line, go off the little bit of speed and still defend. Unfortunately, it looks like he's struggling the whole way around here with a car on his outside. We, we did say last... Sorry, Dennis. We did say last week that this track, you can ride side by side for about six corners while thinking a strategy to pass. And that's certainly what's happening now. And Monet, of course, is right behind them also. He's just watching this all unfold, thinking, mm, where's my chance? Oh, so it's Melvin from Andre from Monet for 7th, 8th and 9th. That's the three cars you see as Monet has a bit of a moment going through that corner. I'm not sure what happened. It's like he got on the brakes in the rear and was locking or something. You do just dab the brakes ever so slightly in that corner just to dip the nose in to get the tires to grip. Of course, the corkscrew is a very difficult corner to get right. Yeah, I think it's a passing corner with bikes, but certainly not with cars. Yeah, I think the exit along this part of it here is all part of the corkscrew. I think down here is where you would start to start maybe into there, but otherwise the final turn. That would, you would use the corkscrew maybe to set up these corners. Yes, yeah, you can see the cement wall on the inside that indicates turn 11 and the start. You can see the people to the left and the, the bridge at the end of the, the main straight. So that's where as Americans label them as garages on the track map. But a nice battle that's running here with Andre Hildebrandt, uh, Melvin Brandt, Andre Hildebrandt and Monet Deploy. Yeah, two of them having a really good battle at the moment. Now, Monet seems to be falling off the pace a little bit. So to watch track limits as well, which is other surveys being quite strict on that tonight. The warning issued early in the race. I say early in the race. How much time is left to run, Dennis? That's a good question. Two minutes something. I think on the left camera at the top, do you see the... the it's only really small, but it, I think it's two minutes, 12, 13. Two minutes, about. eight seconds, yes. Two minutes, there eight we seconds. Go, come. So, minutes is not much depending where the race leader is of course because the race leader will always come and finish the lap so where is the race stay? leader race leaders into the final yeah. second last turn i think heading past the pit entrance yeah so the e, i can't remember what the qualifying times were so with one minute 45 dennis help me with the quality times uh, I actually don't know exactly what the qualifying times were. I didn't make a mental note of it. It happened so fast. So it might be the last lap with one minute 35 to go. We'll just see where Farad ends up. But he's got 1.1 second ahead of Timo Smith. That's and a change. 
uh, yes, the, the top four have changed completely. Timo Smith, Sean Olifi, and Jason Unwood, and then Jonathan Benz. That makes up the top five. Andre Dippenauer, Melvin Brandt, Andre Hilbrandt, uh, Mario Deploy, and Julian Brains makes up the top ten. So this is interesting because obviously Jason and Herod were fighting for the lead. So I'm not sure if one of them made a mistake and as a result Jason lost out. Timo up to second. Yes, and within striking distance as well. Although this is the last lap. We are on the final lap now. Right, so certainly things are very, very interesting in the front. Kenneth, I think, just doing enough to win. He's about just under a second, and Tima has a decent turn of speed about him. We haven't seen the Minions car that high up in a long, long time. We have seen him in the previous set of races, or about two series ago, actually win a race with a reverse burnt in his favour, and he was off like a scalded cat. But this is all on merit, because certainly Timo Smith is coming for the race win, but just with a second to go, I think it's just too late that he actually got past Jason and Sean. Certainly there was a battle raging on between Jason and Sean, and that's popped around, and Timo was there to bounce to take that second position. Yeah, sorry about missing the action at the front. Unfortunately, I'm trying to look at all the timing screens to find all the other action happening. Like, for example, this battle here, and there's another battle happening back here. These guys are on their final lap, and look at these guys fighting for 16th place. You could yeah. say between Malt, Panada, yeah. and Hilke, and off they go both into the barrier. Yeah, and that, I think, is where they're going to sit, because is this the race leader coming along with Timo Smith behind him? The race it's... is over when they get to the line, or they get to the line, so the race is over already. Yes, I believe that's it. I believe that the leader has crossed the line, so this, I think, is a yeah. man crossing the line leader. finishing it. Yep. So, Karit Bekas from Timo Smith, Sean Wolifi, that's your top three for race one. Jason Underwood, Jonathan Benz, Jan-Rey Dippenaar, Melvin Brandt, Mornay Deploy, Andre Hildebrandt, Julian Brains, that's top ten. Dinesh didn't get a mention the whole race and he got a, a demon 11th place. So well done Dinesh, sorry for not mentioning you, but I don't think we got to see Dinesh once. I think I might uh, have clicked him near the start of the race because he did seem to have a good start, but um, they never quite got back to him because he was kind of in open air so he never actually focused on him, but he actually had a really good race. Yeah, three DMFs. Van Arda, Renan and De Toy. So that's certainly a turn up for the books. As I think two of them were taken out on the penultimate or the last lap, in fact. They had a bit of a coming together, Van Arda and Renan, and that's the DNA for the two of them. Stan Bazadnet coming across the line ahead of Arian Balder, so a good race for Stan as well. We end up in 16th place, Arian in 17th place. And Bierke is also a good race for Jan, 19th place. Caroline, I think the last to finish will be in 20th. I believe that that's now everyone finishing. I think Gielke actually managing to limp over the line, taking 18th in the end. And here we have our results. Yep. Caroline getting 20th position and the last person so that won't scroll because it might go to the three that did not finish. But those are the scoring positions. Caroline all the way from Nan. Yeah, so the drivers below that won't score any points, so I don't suppose I need to wait till it scrolls. No, the race will not start at Birkus. All right, let's jump to an ad break. We'll be back shortly for race two.
right, welcome back everybody to the Sim Experience SA 2024 Mazda MX-5 Cup sponsored by the SafeBoys.com. This of course is race two. This is the SafeBoys MX-5 Cup round two, race two from Laguna Seca Raceway in California, United States. Another 20 minute race. I'm your commentator Dennis Mitchell, joined once again by Sean Woodgate. Welcome Good evening, Dennis. Thanks, Dennis, and good evening all, as we're all set for race two of round two. Just going to quickly bring up the points for anyone that wants to know what the point structure is. First position is 350 points, 30th and lower is 10 points. You're only allocated points if you do not DNF, so you have to finish the race to get points. Just quickly putting up the points here, so if anyone wants to watch it, they are welcome to. Get up as well. Get that out the way. Right, let's keep going here. And we're away. Right, so reverse grid is Julian Brands, Andre Hildebrand, Borne Deploy, uh, Melvin Brunt takes up third position already, you see past Jonathan Benz is up a position as well, Dippenard up into third, Melvin up into fourth, Andre Hildebrand up into second, my goodness, Julian I think with the battling behind him taking place, he's actually running solo and he's actually getting away from everybody, there's a spin in the background, it's the blue and orange car, I don't have it in my head at the moment and that's from in about the top six. Oh, there's two further back. Luckily, they don't hit anything, so they'll just restart at the back of the field. So I think that's Timo and Van Westhuizen. So Timo, who was actually did a Demon Race 1, is all the way at the back of the field now has to do it all over again. So Timo got 320 points in Race 1, which was second position, and now I think he's going to be last or second last. Yeah, this is a, a reminding me a lot of last week where we had Julian once again in... in 10th place taking pole position for race 2 he's done it again this week but this week Melvin had a bad race run and here he is having a good race 2 he's already 2nd place after the incidents he had he at least managed to get a good position where he's managed to salvage something for race 2 so he could still salvage some really good points for the championship especially with Jason having not the greatest race 1 and Timo now not having the greatest race 2 and certainly Melvin, it was 0.1 of a second. There it is. You can see it with the eye. It's a car length and less. Melvin's got a demon exit out of there. The track unluckily turns to the left, so he'll be on the outside of the corner. Maybe you can do the double switch back onto the main straight or, and position the car. So a little bit of a nudge there, but he's going to be on the outside again for the sweep and for the hairpin. So Julian just has to hold position, leave enough place for Melvin. And Melvin will have to go around the outside or tuck in behind him and think another strategy to get past him. Then we all take different lines. Oh, oh Julian's yeah. run wide there. Too, too late on the brakes was Julian. Yeah. Now, he's, now he's got a carriage on his outside as well. Yeah, so um, Jandre's got past. Julian is down to third. Gerrit is right there. Has better speed, continues the momentum. And look at Ben's around Julian's the on. outside. Right around the outside, carrying the momentum. Uh, Julian's up on the inside there. Oh, it's Harry going around the inside there because you've got to be careful with that sausage because we don't want to hit that. Three wide, four wide there. But he forgets about who's on his right hand side and is that Andre Hildebrandt. There's the change. Jonathan up around the Benz outside. Gets... Yeah. So and if Emily Benz now. Julian is just getting swallowed up by the pack and then I think it's Sean Olaf here. Yeah. Carl Hose in 13th, so he's there's three abreast, and that's not going to work. They settle it very, very nicely, I must say. Um, good maturity from those three drivers just to settle that position. Julian, Emily, well done, Emily, holding on to the guys, and Sean Willifield, that's seventh, eighth, and ninth. So Emily's in the middle there in the white and blue car. I'll just make sure of that that she is in number 88. That is a yes. Yeah, so Emily Benz, so having a good race there, also showing some good racing skills there. She's on the outside now, and that's not the place to be unlucky for this corner, and passing Emily is going to be Sean Willifield. We have an incident there for Melvin, a slowdown for Melvin. I think the guys have now learned how the slowdowns work. You have 60 seconds to serve a slowdown, so you have to give back a certain amount of time. I'm not sure what that time must be. 
so it's probably get off the throttle stance it well not get off but uh, best served i think in a straight that you just get off the throttle slightly stay off it for x number of seconds and then um, full throttle again because then you don't have to give up any of your racing line through a corner and there are enough straight bits on this track that you can actually do that in 60 seconds not too sure what's happened to stan he's showing as 100 percent damage when i click on him we see a ghost on track so i think there's a bit of a glitch in the system there maybe a connection issue you definitely wouldn't have 100 percent and still 100 percent damage still and still driving. be driving yeah. now so unlucky stan runs car number 24. look at this battle going on here four guys fighting here what is this for 15th place i think yeah, Harvey close amongst them as well. I think Harvey will enjoy the battle more than anything else, just to be in amongst the, the guys and competing for positions. So, they go through again, car number 43, just that's Dinesh Singh. Yay, Dinesh, I got to see you out on track and give you a mention. Dinesh running in, well, I don't know if it's the Monster Energy colors or sponsorship by Monster Energy, but it's their colors in the lime green and black. So Dinesh, certainly we did apologize for not giving him a mention and then we make up for it. He gets actually quite good airtime, but he's fighting off Monet Deploy. At the moment, Timo Smith has passed him. So Timo, whatever happened to Timo, there's Dinesh still in the lead. Uh, there's a change. Uh, beside note, Smith. Timo coming past Richard. Beside note, now he's off to Van Verstaisen. So it's all happening. There's a spin at the back at the last corner. So the guys, everything can and will change before the end of this race. And it's still 14 and a half minutes to go. Side by side here. Yeah. Rihanna on the outside. Timo on the inside. Rian might actually carry more momentum, but Timo does have the inside line. Oh, as you see, Andre Hildebrandt has gone off. I'm not sure if that was bouncing off the wall. That might be damage. So, a good race one for Andre. We did mention that he had a demon race in race one. And then a slight mistake, and it looks as though he did it all on his own. Car number 69 is Timo. And he certainly made up a lot of positions often. He did mention that he was at the back of the field or thereabouts and now finds himself in 10th position. Emily in a very creditable 8th position, running the flag for the ladies. Jason actually having a pretty decent second race, his fourth place at the moment. Yeah, the gap that is, I wouldn't say troublesome, but there's one and a half seconds between Melvin and Jan Ray, then a second, 1.1 seconds, uh, Dipnar to Birkus, and then Jason is only 0.3 of a second behind Kharat. So here you can see Jason right behind the flying bumblebee, and that is pushing for podium for this race. Maybe not for podium overall for the day, but certainly Jason is making life very, very difficult for Kharat. Here they go now with a view from the car behind them. No, can't be Julian, that's Jonathan's car that we're looking from now looking forward. Probably the best so, view in the house. Yeah. The best view, I don't know, but that's the best view. So looking forward, this is sixth, fifth and fourth. And everything settles almost. Yes, they do. The flying bumblebee just closes the racing line. Jason has to t accept that place that, well, he has to accept his position on track. I don't think he's going to be very happy with fourth in the race, so he's going to be fighting for it. But in so doing, he's allowing Jonathan to keep right there with him. So Jonathan just has to keep an eye on these two and might even inherit that fourth place. So Jason all over the back end area there, but I don't think there's going to be past there. You might up into the corkscrew, you can go into the corkscrew if you're really late in the brakes, you can get a movement to the corkscrew. I think all the way up the hill it's a bit difficult to get past, especially in these cars. So either into the corkscrew or maybe ride right at the bottom of the corkscrew, or even into the final turn. But you've got to build the momentum, you've got to get it all here, and then hope that the guy doesn't block your momentum. Yeah, because if you get through the corkscrew... Oh, Quite well, yeah, there you can see he's actually might even lose the position to is a Jonathan. Yeah, he oh, goes quite Yeah, he almost, he just manages to hold on, but certainly uh, Jonathan is right there with Jason, and Jason can't relax for a while. Maybe he's got to concentrate on keeping Jonathan Benz behind him in fifth, rather than trying to attack Harriet for third. We also have a battle further down, a good battle here going on with Julian. So Julian is still in the fight. He's five seconds back or fifth place, but he's got Sean Ulifir right behind him and he's fighting him off as hard as can be. And Emily, Emily Benz not too far back. 
She's running a bit isolated. And Matty Renault is in ninth position behind her. Look at this behind Julian. Julian certainly has to fight. Has he got the inside line? Has he got to check the brakes? Drifts it. And that's a clever thing to do. You get past the car, and you because you're just that little bit later on the brakes, you actually drift to the outside of the corner, which is turning left, and you effectively put your car in the way of Julian's car in that case. And Julian just couldn't come back at him. But these cars definitely slipstreaming plays a part. So let's see, does Julian now have an advantage being in the slipstream? Can that drag him closer? Because sometimes you just, you know, the times are so close that the slipstream makes all the difference. In real life, we saw at Daytona, race one, the driver that came across the line on the last lap coming through the chicane at Daytona, which is basically onto the banking around one turn. He was first place out of there, came across the line in 13th place. Because, because of slipstreaming. Yeah. yeah those, those cars are all about the aerodynamic effect and it makes a massive difference. I think here where you're changing direction so often, the car behind you runs into the brick wall of the air that you are no longer displacing on his or her behalf. But certainly there a mistake, mistake made by Julian and he lost in an instant there after about two or three car lengths. I think we have quite a few battles going on further back as well. I'm just going to jump back to this one. We've got Monet. That's, yeah, I think he's got Andre Hildebrandt recovering behind him. Dinesh Singh coming through the pack as well. Dinesh yeah. and Andre side by side there. Yeah, they get through the corner and then, of course, it turns away in the favour of Dinesh. Now he's got to keep in mind where the next corner goes and position his car on the left for the left turning corner, which forces Andre to the outside of the corner. But Andre then tucks back on the inside for the straight and then you've got a, a kink to the left and then a hairpin left. So Andre is well positioned to actually make something of this on the Dinesh. You drive the Andre. Yeah, and also by Dinesh to give him the room in which to do that. So Andre... Hildebrandt is up into 14th passing, passing D. Nash Singh. A lot of S's in that sentence. <laughs> and just to let everyone know that the drivers are indeed using the hard BF Goodrich tyre. That's the only tyre option they have. So tyres are not a problem in the race. They definitely last 20 minutes without a problem. In real life they do, I think it's 45 minute races. So the tyres are designed to last. We see a hurt around the outside. But how, did get, how did Harit get to Sixth position. I'm going to assume that there was maybe contact between Herod and Jason. Yes, while we were watching the, the, the race further back, because Jason is in third, Melvin leads by four seconds from Yandre Dippenard. So certainly something did happen that was off camera to us, and our apologies, we were trying to include the mid-pack. Melvin Brunt leads, look at that, it's a country mile with eight and a quarter minutes to go. Certainly behind it is very, very tight, and we will see whether there's going to be any change. Car number eight is Yandre Dippenar, and Yandre Dippenar is fighting off Jason Underwood right behind him. Jason on the outside of the corner. I don't think that's the place to be. Is he going to try the switchback? Remember, this is, I've said it before, it's a hairpin, but it's not such a sharp hairpin, so you'll probably be handling the corner on the throttle more than what you will on anything else. Get the car settled, and then just keep the gentle on the throttle going through, and then once you exit the corner, probably floor it and change the gear. But I don't and drive so I can't say but my estimate would be third gear for that um, turn. I think we can see the gearing there in the bottom right. We can see he's in third gear there. You can see the revs are the red, the speed is the green. There we go. Oh they got it in in uh, metric in kilometers an hour. There was something I saw that you put out early in the day is the power to weight ratio and it gave it is it horsepower per kilograms so and that's a nice mix of imperial and metric yeah uh, i think the normal measure is kilowatts per ton but nonetheless that's the way they give it in um it's not unusual for the americans to mix tails deliciously or measure mixed um the measurements deliciously and it just adds to the confusion it's certainly a nice battle here for Jason. I don't think he's having it all his own way. And Yandre Dippenar holding him off. But in so doing, they are now five seconds behind Melvin Brunt. So Melvin, where he didn't have too good a race one, he's going to have a good race two potentially. And it's going to be interesting to see how he scores for the day. 
and Timo is making his way through. Timo having quite an epic race so far, having been basically stone last. He's worked his way up to 10th place at the moment, fighting for 9th place with Matty. Places are swapping back and forward as they go different parts of the track. Yeah, I was in ninth for a brief second and now he's into ninth full time. Julian is fighting all that he's worth. Timo Smith and oh, there comes Matty again past him. Who's a, is that Julian that spun out there? I it's, think it was. Yes, yes. there is. Yes, he's Julian. In yellow, so let's see if Deploy can get past him while he tries to recover the car. Just still, it looks like Kharit now fighting ahead of him, Sean Olifir. So now that's Julian that's now recovering. Just get the car color. Let's just have a look there. That's 55. So that's Matty that's holding on for dear life. Matty Renan with the boy behind him now. That's a long way behind. So Matty's attacking Timo. Timo has actually think just got past. That means Timo is now up into eighth where he was running the last virtually. Look at, at, some look at the sorry to button. We've got Emily ahead of Jonathan. Emily's ra running in sixth place at the moment. She's ahead of her dad. Her dad won't be happy about that. <laughs> I really enjoyed when they show that this is probably one of these sports where regardless of who and what you are, you can be competitive if you have the finesse and the know-how to get in there and mix it up with everybody. Yeah, great, great showing there by Emily. We've seen she's definitely got some good pace, and I think as the different tracks obviously show to different drivers liking, she's definitely doing quite well at this round. So he no family orders because she is running a solid sixth position there. And Jonathan is in seventh position. 0.7 of a second now behind him, but that, it's also depends who's on the brakes and who's on the accelerator in and out of that corner. Who's battling here further it's back? Jandre and Jason again. At it again. Oh, Jason up into second. So I think Jason got past and he's got the right line for this corner. Jandre yeah, might, might lunge up the inside. He's got the position. He might go for it. He is. He's going for it. Yeah, and he leaves just enough space, does Jason? Nicely done. Yes, by both of them. Now he's on so, the inside for the next corner as well, so even though they're side by side, he will get the advantage. Yes, so Jason's got to rethink oh. all of that. Come up on he, the inside now. he lost a bit of traction there, now Jason's got the advantage going into the corkscrew. And that's a difficult corner to get the car settled and turned in, especially if you're on the outside. Yeah, and he just drifted past the nose, on, well, not even onto the curving side, didn't even use all the corner available to him, but Jason. But now it means they're eight, nine seconds behind Melvin, and Melvin is out of sight. He's just decided I've had enough of this. Three and a half minutes still to go in this lap. In this race, sorry. Well, we Let's see where Kerrit is as well. Sorry to butt in. Kerrit is up to fifth place, so slowly fighting off. The no, I think he was behind Benz at one stage. No, he's got two and a half seconds there about on Sean Willifield, who's got a solid fourth. Um, Yandre in third, Jason fighting for, well, he's not fighting, he's defending second position for all he's worth. But the flying bumblebee is not going to be too happy with fifth position. I wonder if he's going to get toast, never mind supper. <laughs> his last lap was a 39.0 and Sean ahead was a 39.5 so his lap time isn't enough to catch with only 2 minutes 45 left in the race yeah. Yeah, I'm going to assume that's probably 2 more laps because we'll do this lap and then I think 1 more before the time runs out yeah so Oh, interesting, Karen Birkus. The, the 10 position. Oh, who's that car number 8? Yandre Dipinar. Yandre Dipinar, and he was running so well, and he falls down, and Emily gets past him. Jonathan has got past Emily in the meantime, but Emily's still running. There comes Timo, also past him now. So, uh, Jonathan Benz into 5th, Emily into 6th, Timo Smith into 7th, and Yandre in 8th position, I think, once he gets going again. Julian Brains, where's he settled? Into 14th position. He was running so so much better, but then we just saw the mishap there, and you lose with the cars being so evenly matched and running so close together, you lose a fistful of positions just with one mistake. Good running there by Dean Ash once again ahead of him in 13th place. So Dean Ash Singh holding off Julian Brains, and these two are now stuck together quite nicely. I'm not sure if Julian maybe has a bit of damage, it doesn't show he has damage. 
absolutely, now that we've seen and identified Dean Ash's car, there's no way we can forget it. Because from what I've heard, you can't really modify the skins. You choose one of the available skins, and that's what you race with. So, Dean Ash, we know what we've got your color and your number. So we can at least call you when we see you, because you can't miss that. Even at night, you'll shine out. So nice battle. Emily's still in the mix here with Timo right behind her. Yandre recovering, so... She's got her mirrors full. Yeah, she's got her hands full of race cars behind her. Oh, track limits there, maybe. Mm -hmm. Definitely um, was off there, so you might have a slowdown, yeah. For Yandre, it's just, again, we're not, um, I always say this, I'm not a track marshal or whatever, so it's just that I comment on what I see, and it's not necessarily meant any malice against any one of the drivers. Nice move there by Timo, now of course Emily's under threat for Yandre. Yandre, yeah, Yandre he's, got... Yeah, he's got it done, he's got it done I think. Yeah, I'm with the corner Ooh. going left. She's hanging she low, left. she doesn't give you much space, she's fighting for dear life, good driving there by Emily. Yeah, so she's trying to hold on to that position for dear life, but goes from what was a sixth down to eighth within a few corners. Who's that going so slow? I think that's one order. So this, of course, is the last yes. lap as well. So we have our race leader coming across the line now to take victory. Melvin Brand takes race victory. Yep. Second place will be Jason Underwood. Good recovery there after all the shenanigans went down. Sean Coffey will take third place. That's a good round for Sean, actually. Very. I'm just trying to have a quick look where he finished in the first race. He got 300 points. He got third. So third and third for Sean. A great day for him. He's definitely on the podium with that. Good recovery drive for Matty as well. Yeah. When he deploys, tenth place. Nice running out the top ten. Timo Smith in sixth also was running last after the first lap shenanigans that happened. I actually didn't do driver of the day. I totally forgot with everything happening. <laughs> I'll be a run for that. Thanks, Pookie, for the reminder, but we're a bit late now. But um, if I had to just think off the top of my head, and it's purely because of where he came from in race two, then I'd say my nominee for driver of the day would be Timo Smith. From last to sixth position. Well driven, sir. Yeah, I think that was a very good drive by Timo. All right, I'm going to just get ready to jump to the ad breaks. The results should pop up now. There they are. I'll just wait for those to to clear. I think um, last place got a DNF. Well, the last two places were DNF, so the, only the top 20 would get points anyway. I'm going to jump to an ad break any moment now, and we'll be back shortly with uh, driver interviews for the top three overall. We just need to work out quickly who those were. But we will we'll be back shortly. See you then. All right.
right welcome back everyone to the completion of round two of the sim experience SA, the safe boys mx5 cup round two from laguna seca in california united states of course we are now joined by our top three drivers for the round which are in first place Herod birkus in second place jason underwood and in third place melvin brunt i'm just double checking that but um I'm almost sure, but I'm just double checking that I haven't made a mistake somewhere. Um, 660, 630, 620. Yeah. Okay. So. Including the qualifying <laughs> points, we have Herod in first on what are the points there, Sean? Um, now I've got to just, it is, huh, so it doesn't give us much time. It's 600 uh, for the day, it's 665 points. Um, uh, yeah, 665 to Harrod for the day, 632 for Jason, and 620 for Melvin. All right, well, let's start with Harrod. Harrod, that was a, a very interesting round. You had a very interesting race, too. Um, lots of action there. You looked like you were struggling a little bit with some of the incidents. Then you were making your way back. Then seemed to have another incident. Talk us through your race, and especially race two. Yeah, in the second race there, um... I had a couple of track cuts, so I had to slow down and then go again and I had a truck track cut again and I had to slow down. So, so yeah, and then Jason and myself went at it there and he was on the inside. So I thought I was going to just try the, the cut back there and I had the ever so slightly nudge on the back and it just spun me around. But it's, it is what it is. I mean, these cars are, are quite difficult uh, to race close, but um, yeah, slightest nudge, had a little spun there and just kept my head down and came back. Well, congratulations on first place overall. Thank you. And second place, Jason. Uh, interesting race. I was expecting you to be sort of more up there. You seem to have a bit of an incident in one of the races where you went foot back. I think that was race one. Talk us through what happened. Did, uh, did you have an incident with someone? Did you just get a track cut? What was the story? Um, I had an incident with Harrod, um just before going up to the corkscrew. And then the car was wrecked. Um, and yeah, I just hobbled around for the last three laps. Pretty much all I'm gonna say now. All right, was that race one's result then? Yeah, that was race one, yeah. And race two, how, how did race two go? Were you, any incidents in race two? Because you seemed like you also had to make your way back a little bit in race two. Or was um, that just because of the starting order? No, because I obviously started ninth, I think. Well, no, I started seventh, I think it was. Um, but that's obviously the nature of the reverse grid and then just waited patiently to bite my way through and then people were making mistakes up up ahead and I just thought okay well let's go had a great race with Yanaman um, yeah it was pretty pretty exciting for about five laps um, and yeah otherwise it was pretty um, pretty normal race too great stuff and congratulations in second cheers and third place Melvin welcome back uh Third place, I think last week you were second place, so back on the podium. How was your race? You you seem to have a great race too, obviously thanks to the starting position. What happened in race one? It looked like you were involved in an incident. Um, was it just too many guys into one spot? How was it from your point of view? It, it was in the first turn on the first lap. Uh, I was in the middle of two guys and then I just got sandwiched and got damaged. And then just try to go through every, go through it up to to top ten and then uh, close down the gap to top seven and then start then uh, finish seventh. So the race two, I got a really good start. Then just took the lead and just drove away. Yeah, that just shows that your you know your finish position is very critical. As long as you're in the top ten, then that can salvage your result and you manage to still get a third overall. So congratulations yeah. on third. Thanks. Sean, would you like to finish off by asking the drivers a question? No, I think you've pretty much done it. I'll just give four, and this is provisional. Please, it's not final until Dennis says so. But I have the overall top three at the moment as Gerrit Beekes on 1,340 points. Second is Jason on 1,314 points. And Melvin third on 1,300 points. Extremely close, in other words. <laughs> yes. And then I've got to just um, double check and make sure 
but that's the, the top three that we seem to see regularly every week they also are the top three overall after two rounds of two races each and the points it just happens to be that tonight the qualifying points earners are no the race one second and third positions are not here and the second point uh, sorry second place in race one went to timo and tonight sean willifield got both races third place but didn't get to the podium yeah quite strange how the points work that the third place in birth doesn't get on the podium yes but all right thank you guys i'm going to just drop you all out thank you very much for joining the interviews and well done on your top three positions thanks guys Catch you next week. Just yes. All right. I think I'll have dragged him out there. I'm going to drag the right person. <laughs> Sorry, she wanted to drag you out by mistake. Yeah. I'm <laughs> trying, <laughs> trying to drag yeah. Matty and he and uh, also Melvin and he moved and then I ended up dragging you. Yeah. All right, of course, that is then the completion of this round, which is round two. So next round, we head off to Portimao, which is the Portimao chicane circuit. So the, I think it's the third sector. It's slightly different to the Grand Prix circuit. It's a bit tighter. So we have this, and then later on in the championship, round eight is the Grand Prix circuit, which is going to be a bit faster in the final sector. So we might see a bit more overtaking in this in, the, in that final sector because I think there's two hairpins included in there. So that'll be quite interesting. And that's it. I guess that's the end of this round. So thank you everyone for joining us for this. Remember, if you enjoyed it, to hit the like and subscribe button. That brings us to the conclusion of round two of the MX5 Cup 2024, the Safe Boys Championship. So until next week, have a good week. And remember, hit the like and subscribe. Hit the, hit the notification button if you'd like to be notified for upcoming events. Until then, thank you very much, Sean. And catch, Thanks, everyone, catch everyone next week. Thank you all next week. Cheers.